Alright, so we start the season out with a young Gojo and Gato. They're students at Jujutsu High and they're like best friends or whatever. But they don't always agree on stuff. And there's one part, they kind of talking about their philosophies a little bit while playing basketball. And Gato misses the shot while Gojo like bowls that motherfucker in with ease. Clearly showing that Gato is wrong and Gojo is right. Anyway, Gato and Gojo get tasked with saving this girl. She's a star vessel or something. Now, Tengen, he's the barrier nigga of Jujutsu High. He needs a new vessel every now and then so he doesn't like evolve into some other being. They do like a minute long exposition dump on this and one of the core tenets of like shows is show don't tell. And that's a problem I have with this show. They do these exposition dumps a few times, probably because the show is confusing as fuck, so they have no other choice. But I digress. This is a recap, not a review, so I'm gonna let it slide. Anyway, they gotta protect this girl for two days so their boss can suck her ass up and live a little longer. But don't worry, she cool with it. She says she wants to be sucked up by the old dude. Anyway, so the girl's at school and there's these groups that don't want her to get sucked up by the old man because they want jujitsu to fall. So now they're attacking her. But Gojo and Gato clean their ass up real quick. To make a long story short, since this is one big ass backstory, on the day the girl's supposed to get sucked, the untouchable Gojo gets touched. My man Toji pulls up in a big way. Gojo's holding him off so the others can get away, but he damn near splits his body in two. Now down in the school, Gato's got the girl and they're right at the base of where like the assimilation's supposed to take place. And Gato's like, yo, like all you gotta do is walk up in there, but if you don't wanna do it, just say so. And she starts crying and everything, saying, nah, I still wanna do hood rat shit with my friends. Yes, but I wanted to do hood rat stuff with my friends. But before they can go, Toji pulls up and blows her head off. Which is wild, because he was just like jumping around like faster than sound and using knives and shit. Where the hell did he get a gun from? Anyway, Gato starts fighting Toji and Toji is just bodying all of his pets. Then he ends up bodying his ass too. So Toji wins and he takes the girl, right? And right as he's done with his mission, he's walking away and Gojo pulls up, still alive. And he's like, yo, you should have killed me, because I'm about to whoop your ass. And Gojo hype as hell because he finally figured out a part of his technique. Like mid battle, he up here floating with sun rays and shit like he Jesus or something. Anyway, he blows a hole through Toji and Toji's dead. Anyway, this is still backstory, so let's move it along. Gato's tired of this shit and he comes to the conclusion that if he kills all humans, no more curses will be born. Instead of, you know, just constantly killing the curses and letting humanity live. So then he becomes evil. And then we see that little Fushiguro in the current time is Toji's son. Alright, enough backstory. Apparently more high level cursed spirits have been popping up. So our main three is put on a team to investigate. Apparently someone's been leaking information from inside Jujutsu High and they're looking for that person. Now they think it's Mekamaru. You don't remember who he is, he's the tree Pokemon guy. And then we cut to him talking to Mahito and Gato. And it looked like they working together and stuff. Mahito fixes his body up. But then Mekamaru's like, nah, it's time to throw hands, bruh. So he summons this big ass Megazord looking thing, right? And it's a dope ass fight. My favorite part is when he Spartan kicks the hell out of Mahito. But alas, Mekamaro fucking loses the fight. I guess that night we see a huge veil is around like Tokyo or something now. Ton of people trapped inside. And this was all done to lure out Gojo. And Gojo pulls the fuck up. He's face to face with the bad guys. And then we learn like that the plan was to get him there by himself because he only works alone. So they knew they can lure him out. There would be no other sorcerers with him. Then if they bring him to a place where there's a whole bunch of just regular humans, he won't go that crazy because he don't want to kill any bystanders. And Gojo is just too powerful for these niggas. Like he literally like splatters fucking weed face all over the wall. And like, you know, Gojo doesn't want to use his domain expansion because it's going to kill people. But there's a dope part right where he uses it, but he only uses it for two tenths of a second. And he just runs around like fast as hell, killing all the bad guys while that short amount of time is not going to hurt the humans. But that's when we see the bad guy's plan come to a head. They was doing all that to get his little box prison in place, which traps Gojo and he can't get out of it. Now he's face to face with Gato and Gojo knows it's not really Gato. So Gato weird ass unstitches his head and we see like a little crang joint from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in his brain that I guess is actually controlling him. Now Yuji and everyone else is around too, somewhere trying to figure out what's going on. And like this little earpiece from Mekamaru gets on Yuji and is like, yo, Gojo got sealed, bruh. And Mekamaru's like, yo, I died like last week or something, but I set up all these like forward precautions with my robot joints to make sure everything goes smooth going forward. And he tells Yuji to like go outside and let everybody know that Gojo's been sealed because this shit important. And Yuji up there screaming it. And with that, everything's kind of in place for both sides. 
and like the fights are really starting. So because of his yelling, Yuji ends up with Fushiguro and this other dude who we ain't seen before. And they want to try and take down one of the barriers, right? So we get another little exposition dump on how barriers don't actually have to act like the way we were already taught, which is kind of annoying. But basically like it's stronger if the person is outside the barrier and standing somewhere outside in the open for whatever reason. So they go up on this building and jump these three niggas that is up there. They drop this old man down from the skyscraper that's like, you know, 70 stories high and he just eats that shit. He's still good to go. While that other guy that he was with, he's fighting the old lady and the other dude that are still on top of the skyscraper. And that's kind of important because the old lady turns the other guy into Toji. She like summons Toji's soul into his body. And we all know Toji is a motherfucking problem. Down at the bottom, Yuji and Fushiguro figure out a way to beat the old man, right? And it's funny as shit because they really jump in this old dude like they in high school, bro. But I don't have the time to talk about the intricacies of every single fight. So just know that they whooped his ass. So remember, the goal was to remove that barrier, and they finally found the things that create the barrier and got that one specific one, Dale Yeeted. Now, this dude been walking around with a hand sword joint, and he been stabbing people, right? He a little crazy. And he runs into our girl, Nobara, who's with this other girl, right? And Nobara takes him head on while the other girl runs away. And when he catches up to her, he tees off on her ass. And then he also gives Nobara a concussion. This guy's a menace. But then an even bigger menace shows up, Nanami. And this fight was meme to hell on the internet, so I'm sure you already seen it, but man, Nanami hits this nigga with like a level three super move in a fighting game or something. Shit was dope. So anyway, he saves the girls and he heads deeper down. Next episode, we get one of my favorite fights of the whole season, to be honest. Yuji heads a little deeper down and he runs into Chozo, the bloodbender dude. Now, Chozo's mad at Yuji because Yuji beat up his two brothers and killed him earlier in the show. So he like, I gotta get my revenge. And this fight takes basically the whole episode. But you just know, Yuji loses. And as Chozo's leaving, he gets some false memories in his head. I don't know how or why, but he, now he thinks that Yuji's his brother and he's really about his brothers. And that's kind of important later. Anyway, so now we cut to Nanamin and Maki and they down here with this old dude, I don't remember his name. And they run into this little weird octopus nigga, right? And they jumping this nigga like it's in high school too. They kind of whooping his ass, but then he does his domain expansion. And with this, he turned the ties on the fight or whatever, but then Fushiguro pops in his domain and is trying to open his own domain. Basically, he says he's trying to make a small hole so all his comrades can get out and then they can whoop his ass outside of the dude's domain. But fuck everybody's plans, cause Toji enters that bitch. Now this causes the hole that Fushiguro made to close, but it don't matter cause Toji completely bodies octopus nigga. Then Toji pushes Fushiguro outside and leaves everyone else there. Jogo Volcano Head pulls up and he kind of makes light work of Nanamin Maki and the old guy real quick. But then Jogo randomly leaves and he pulls up on these two girls that are feeding a bunch of Sukuna's fingers to Yuji. And this causes Sukuna to wake up. Now back to Toji and Fushiguro outside. A cool fight ensues between the two of them. It was not really a fight. Toji's just running after this nigga while he's trying to run away because he can't hold his own, of course. And Toji ends up stabbing Fushiguro in the stomach, but then he pulls back. He realizes that Fushiguro is his son and not part of the Zenin clan, I think. So then like he kind of kills himself, which kills the actual body that he was summoned into. Now, Sukuna told Jogo that, yo, if you can like touch me one time in a fight, you know what I'm saying, I'll help you basically. Then another visually stunning fight takes off. And honestly, Sukuna ain't got no business being this motherfucking strong. And at the end, Jogo becomes extra crispy. Now, Fushiguro about to die because of his stab wound, right? And then the little stabby blonde dude, who's not dead from the punch he took earlier, is now chasing him. Fushiguro knows the situation's dire, so he like summons this big old thing as like a last ditch effort. And the thing will kill him too. But like, he won't actually die until the thing he summoned kills the person he summoned it to kill or some shit like that. But Sukuna pulls up and is like, yo, you can't die yet, Fushiguro. There's some shit I need you to do. So Sukuna takes the fight against this summon dude and it's, a, it's another visually beautiful damn fight. Sukuna beats him after causing a ton of destruction and then right after the fight, like Yuji takes over. And Yuji done seen everything Sukuna did and like he just hates himself for it. He feels like he's a murderer now. Then we get some interesting scenes with Nanamin. Gojo nearly killed him, burned him half to death, but he's still fighting all these things while like dreaming of being on a beach somewhere. But then Mahito catches up with him and that boy can kill you just by touching. He touches you and he like changes your soul or whatever. And at the same time, Yuji pulls up to see it. And his last words are basically, Yuji, you got the juice now, bruh.
Then we get another long fight between Yuji and Mahito, and it's also dope. But an important thing to note is that Mahito split his body in two earlier, and one is like running around up top, and that one runs into Nobara, and Nobara kind of beating that one's ass. So then that clone decides it needs to run back to Mahito, I guess, so they can fuse back together, and Nobara gives chase, and then so she runs down there where Mahito and Yuji are fighting. And Mahito slaps Nobara in the face like, tag, you're it. So she about to die. Interestingly enough, though, her body doesn't like explode in the weird grotesque way like Nanami's did. She just kind of falls over. But this kind of breaks Yuji. He has no more will to fight. He's tired of seeing everybody die. And at this time, his boy Toto shows up. And you know, Toto got a hard on for Yuji. This other guy's with Toto and he has like some healing powers. So he heals all of Yuji's current wounds. And he also, he says that Nobara had no pulse and no breathing, but she wasn't dead long. So maybe he could heal her too. Basically, we don't know if Nobara's actually dead or not. So now like part two of this fight commences and it's basically Toto and Yuji versus Mahito, right? I'm not a big fan of Toto's character, but his moveset makes for some interesting fights. I'm really proud of how they like, how they did that. Anyway, this fight takes basically the whole episode, right? Another beautiful one, key things are, Toto loses his arm and his powers as it like clap, right? Even though after he loses it, he shows he still got some combat ability. He slaps Mahito's hand, switching places with Yuji and Yuji punches him and shit. Mahito goes to like his final form, some Frieza type shit, but Yuji claps them cheeks anyway. So then Gato pulls up and basically absorbs Mahito cause he lost. Then he starts talking about some Supreme art, which is like a whole nother part of the show. I gotta remember how it works and how it interacts with every other part of the show. And it is, it's a lot, man. Anyway, he swallows Mahito's little body joint thing. And then a bunch of other people pull up. Even Chozo pulls up and is like, you know, why you mess with my little brother? Meaning Yuji, even though Yuji's like, I don't know what the fuck you got going on. But Chozo starts fighting Gato. Then this girl comes in, basically freezes all of our guys. And then the girl who was talking to Gato at the beginning of the season, when he realized that he didn't like humans or whatever, she pulls up to the fight. Then Gato uses Mahito's power, the idol transfiguration joint over like everything. I don't know, it don't really make a whole lot of sense. Basically he says like, he did a whole bunch of shit before, so at this moment he can turn a lot of non-sorcerers into sorcerers. Cause you know, his belief was like regular humans are the worst thing because they create curses or some bullshit, I don't know. Then he leaves with Gojo in hand. After all that, we kind of see the state of Japan through like news readings and random people's lives. Yuta's back on the scene and we see that his job is now to kill Yuji. And at the very end with some text on screen, we see that Gato's alive and that Jujutsu High says that they gotta kill him. Gojo's expelled from the high school. And if you side with Gojo, you're now a criminal. The principal Yaga is now sentenced to death because they say that he incited the whole incident. They not cool with Yuji no more, so his death sentence is back on the table and someone needs to kill him right now. And the nigga they chose to kill him is Yuta. Then we get a little final scene with Yuji alone on a bridge and he claps his hand and like some shit comes up and then that's it. Now, I don't know what the fuck the significance of this is. Did he get like Toto's powers or something? But it, I don't know, it don't make sense. A lot of show don't make sense to me. But the shit was dope. See y'all in 2025 when it starts back again.